Good morning, student. Now I am going to teach you eighth standard water lesson. Now water is very essential in our day-to-day -day life. Here the report says without water there would be no life on the earth. Just like other living organisms, we also need water to survive. We need water for so many activities like cooking, washing, cleaning, and irrigation. Water resources are getting depleted nowadays because of growing demands from increasing populations and lifestyle changes. There is also a, a reduction in the supply of water due to the pollution of water sources. Here, uh, climate changes which contribute to the rising variability in rainfall. We all depend on water for our living and so every individual is responsible for saving the water. In this lesson we will learn about the sources, properties and uses of water and also about the water pollution and treatment methods. Here composition. What are all the compositions? Three fourth of our planet, planet earth is filled with water. Water exists in three states, namely solid, liquid and gases. Now we have to learn about the electrolysis of water. Electrolysis of water can be easily demonstrated with the help of an experiment. In this experimental setup, a glass beaker fixed with two carbon electrodes is filled with water up, up to one third of its volume. The positive carbon electrode acts as anode and negative carbon electrode act as a cathode. Two test tubes are placed on the electrode as shown in the given figure. I will show that. The electrodes are connected to a battery and current is passed until the test tubes are filled with a particular gas. If the gas collected is tested using a burning spleen, we can notice that the gas in cathode's side burns with a popping sound. When the extinguished splint is brought near the mouth of the test tube. This property is usually shown by hydrogen gas and so it is confirmed that the gas inside the test tube is hydrogen. The burning splint placed near the anode side, anode side burn or more brightly confirming that it is a oxygen gas. This experimental shows the water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. The ratio of hydrogen and oxygen is 2 is to 1. Hence, for every 2 volumes of hydrogen collected at cathode, there is 1 volume of oxygen collected at the anode. 2 H2O gives electrolysis. Uh, it uh, undergoes electrolysis. It gives 2 hydrogen plus 2 oxygen. Both are gases. Here, the activities are all you learn. Here, preparation of the water. Water was first prepared in 1781 by an English scientist Henry Cavendish. He discovered hydrogen gas when active metals reacted with sulfuric acid. The hydrogen gas released was highly inflammable and burned to a form a colorless product called water. Zn plus H2SO4 gives ZnSO4 that is zinc sulfur plus hydrogen. 2 hydrogen plus oxygen gives 2 H2O that is water. Water is also produced by the reduction of metal oxide by hydrogen, burning of hydrogen in air and burning of hydrocarbon in air. Respiration of plants and animals also releases water. That is C6H2O6, that is the formula of the glucose. When it comes in with the oxygen, it gives carbon dioxide and water and plus energy releases. Here the history of Henry Cavendish, as a British philosopher, a scientist and chemist and a physicist. Cavendish is noted for his discovery of hydrogen. He called it inflammable air. He mixed metals with strong acids and created hydrogen. He created carbon dioxide also by combining metal with strong bases. A laboratory preparation of water. The apparatus used for the preparation of water in the laboratory is shown in the figure 13.2 here. This is the setup, preparation setup. In this method, pure hydrogen gas is passed through uh, anhydrous calcium chloride to absorb water vapor, if present. Dry hydrogen coming out of the opening is burned with sufficient supply of air. The burned hydrogen gas forms droplets of water. When it comes in contact with the 
cold flask distilled water without any dissolved matter is obtained by this method here properties of the water water has some important properties which are familiar to us but these properties are unique to water some of the physical and chemical properties are explained below here the physical properties here nature pure water is a clear and transparent liquid it is colorless odorless and tasteless here the boiling point the boiling point of the water is 100 degrees celsius and one atmospheric pressure at one atmospheric pressure okay at this temperature water boils and changes into steam boiling point of the water increases with increase in pressure for example when a pressure cooker is heated a high pressure is built inside it the high pressure increases the boiling point of the water thus water remains a liquid at a high temperature in the cooker this cooks the food faster here freezing point water freezes at 0 degree celsius and form ice thus the freezing point of water 0 degree celsius the freezing point of water decreases with increase in pressure okay children i hope you understood now come to the density when ice cubes are put in glass of water at room temperature they float on the surface of water this is because ice ice is lighter than water it means that the density of ice is lower than that of the water when the winter temperature temperature when winter temperature is below 0 degree celsius the water in lake will start freezing the frozen ice will float at the top and cover the lake since ice is a bad conductor of the heat it does not allow heat to pass through it so the water below the ice remains in liquid form where most of the aquatic life lives this enables the aquatic animal and plants to survive even in extreme cold conditions density of water at different temperature is given in the table 13.1 you see the size floating on the water you see the table also and then anomalous expansion of water for the same mass of ice and what of and of water the volume of the ice is more than that of the water it is an unusual physical property of the water in the himalayas the temperature can go down even be below 0 degree celsius the water in the water pipe will freeze at this temperature to ice if the pipes are not strong they can crack develop leaks or even burst this is because freezing of water will cause an expansion in the volume and then latent heat of the fu fusion of ice take some ice cubes in a beaker and place a thermometer in it now heat the beaker the thermometer will not uh, register any rise in temperature till all the ice melts here the question arises where does the heat energy go if there is no rise in temperature here the heat energy is utilized in changing the state of the ice from solid to the liquid the amount of the heat energy required by ice to change into water is called latent heat of fusion of ice ice has the highest latent heat of fusion that is 80 calories per gram or 333 36 joules per gram now you have come to the chemical properties what are all the chemical properties action towards the litmus paper pure water in neutral is neutral and it shows no action towards the litmus paper here the stability water is a very stable compound it does not decompose into elements when heated in, uh, to ordinary temperature however if it is heated to 200 degree celsius 0.02 percentage of the water decomposes to form hydrogen and oxygen gas two water gives at the 2000 degree celsius it gives uh, two hydrogen and oxygen both are in the gastric gas form catalytic nature water acts as a catalyst in a number of reactions perfectly dry hydrogen and chlorine gases do not react in the presence of the sunlight however in the presence of the traces of water a reaction takes place with explosion to produce hydrogen chloride that is hydrogen when it mixes with the chlorine gives the hydrogen chloride that is in the moisture and the presence of the sunlight here reaction with the metals water reacts with 
some metals. Metals such as sodium, potassium and calcium react vigorously with water at room temperature. Sodium reacts with water to form hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide solution. Due to the heat evolved in, the, in this reaction, the hydrogen gas catches fire and then burns. That is sodium when react with the water, it gives sodium hydroxide plus water, hydrogen. Magnesium is little uh, more sluggish. It reacts with the hot water and gives hydrogen and magnesium hydroxide solution. See the uh, formula that is the slow and the gradual rusting of iron is called the corrosion. Here is it. Many other metals react with the water to form oxides and hydroxides. Iron is one such metal which form iron oxide called rust. Iron is used in many buildings, factories, bridges, ships and vehicles. The slow and gradual rusting of iron is called the corrosion. Here, uh, reaction with the non-metals. Red hot carbon, that is coke, react with the steam to produce water gas. Carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gives the carbon monoxide and then hydrogen gases. Okay. Carbon, when it uh, combined with the water, it gives carbon monoxide and hydrogen. In the presence of 1000 degrees Celsius. Chlorine gas dissolves in water and produce hydrochloric acid in the presence of sunlight. Okay, now here yeah, the water is a now we have to learn about the portable water. Imagine you are swimming in a sea and by accident you swallow some sea water. How do you feel? You would probably feel like vomiting. The sensation of the feeling nauseous is because of a lot of salt in the water. Every liter of sea water contains 35 gram of the dissolved salt. Most commonly known as sodium chloride, that is NaCl. Such water is called the saline water. It is not suitable for drinking and is said to be non-potable water. The water suitable for drinking is called potable water. Every liter of potable water contains 1 to 2 grams of dissolved salts, mainly common salts. In addition to the common salt, there are small amount of the calcium, magnesium, potassium, copper and zinc. The minerals in water gives it a certain uh, taste. In addition, these minerals are useful for our body's metabolism. Potable water also contains dissolving gases. Here are characteristics of the potable water. Here potable water should be colorless and odorless. It should be transparent. It should be free from harmful microorganisms such as bacteria, virus and protozoa. It should be free from impurities such as suspended solids. It should contain some minerals and salts necessary for our body and some dissolved gases to add taste. Here purification. Out of the total fresh water available on the earth, only one percentage is present in water, water bodies such as rivers and lakes and the rest in frozen in glaciers and polar regions. Okay. Water from these water bodies is unfit for the drinking. Cooking, washing or bathing because it contains suspended and dissolved impurities. It also contains microorganisms such as bacteria. If this water is consumed without purifying, it can cause waterborne diseases such as typhoid, cholera. Therefore, water should be treated and purified before it reaches our home. In conventional water treatment plants, water is subjected to different process for purification. Sedimentation is one process, filtration is another process, sterilization is another process. Here sterilization and then the hardness of water, we use, the, we use soaps and detergents to wash clothes. They form uh, later with water that uh, quickness the process of removal of dirt from the clothes. Water contains a number of dissolvent, salts and minerals. When these salts are present in very small quantities, in water. It is called the soft water. Okay. In this water, soaps or detergent form uh, later easily. Sometimes minerals and salts are present in water in such a large quantity that soaps or detergents form a thick precipitate called the yeah, it called the scum instead of forming leathers. This, mistake, this makes the removal of dirt further difficult. Such water is called the hot water. 
Hardness of water is due to the presence of the dissolved salts of calcium and magnesium. Hardness may be temporary or permanent. Temporary hardness is due to the presence of the carbonate and bicarbonate salts of calcium and magnesium. And permanent hardness results due to the presence of chlorine, chloride and sulphate salts of calcium and magnesium. Disadvantages of hot water It is not good for washing clothes. It forms come with the soap and the detergents which makes the soap ineffective and also spoils the cloth further. It damages the utensils and containers in which it is stored and form a hard layer. It forms scales on the machine parts used in industries and decreases their efficiency. It results in stomach ailment if consumed for a long period. Now, Here water pollution, here contamination of water bodies are as, as a result of human activities is known as a water pollution. Contamination of water bodies occur when harmful substances such as chemicals, images and water waste are released into them. It produces physical, chemical and biological changes in the quality of water. It uh, degrades the water quality. Here water resources in Tamil Nadu. Fresh water resources are the sources of water that are useful to society for domestic agriculture and industrial uses. These include surface and ground water. Examples of surface water include rivers, reservoirs, lakes and tanks. There are 17 major river basins in Tamil Nadu and 61 reservoirs and approximately 41,948 tanks. Lakes and tanks are traditional used in the Tamil Nadu to collect the rainfall during the monsoon which can be used throughout the year. Groundwater sources are called the aquifers. Aquifers are the layers below the ground made of coarse sand and gravel that contain spaces allowing rainwater collection. The uses of groundwater is possible through open wells and bore wells. A sources of the water pollution. When you look around, you can see the polluted water bodies in your surrounding. You can see a lot of unwanted and harmful substances just waste and sewages thrown into them. These substances are called pollutants. These pollutants are released by various activities from different sources. In general, sources of water pollution are classified as natural sources and man-made sources. Some of the sources of water pollution are explain, explained below. That is household detergents. Household detergents are mixing with the good water and then it can spoil the water. And then domestic sewages and then these domestic waste plastics and then uh, agricultural activities, if you uh, give the pesticides and uh, fertilizers, if you use insecticides, then water can be get uh, polluted. Here industrial waste, if it is mixed with the uh, water bodies such as rivers, it can uh, give the uh, pollution. And then oil spills. And then here thermal pollution. Large amount of water is used for cooking purpose in thermal and nuclear power. Uh, that is large amount of water is used for the cooling purposes in thermal and nuclear power plant and many industries. Water is for cooling purposes is uh, discharged back to a river or to original water sources and they are raised to temperature and sometimes with chemicals. This causes a raise in temperature and decrease the amount of oxygen dissolved in water which adversely affect the aquatic life. Here yeah, common pollutants. Pollutants are generally classified domestic pollutants, agricultural pollutants and industrial pollutants. The source and effect of various water pollutants are shown in below. You have to read this tabular column, you read by yourself and then uh, learn the sources. Here control, how can we control? We can control use the detergents that are biodegradable and avoid those that contain toxic chemicals. We are the clothes that is made from natural fibers such as cotton and avoid wearing synthetic fibers such as nylon, polyester, etc. Do not throw waste. Do not throw uh, waste such as plastics into water bodies. Always separate your waste into recyclable, non-recyclable and biodegradable so that it does not cause the pollution. Domestic water, uh, that is domestic waste water, should be treated properly and all harmful substances should be removed from it. 
so it can be reused for flushing toilets and uh, gardening use bio plastics pesticides natural pest control instead of chemical pest control use compost made from cow dung garden garden waste and kitchen waste as a fertilizers water released from industry should be treated before being discharged or recycled for industrial purposes this uh, this is a uh, water lesson i am going to complete now i have completed this lesson you learn and then a pdf also sent for writing the class work thank you children